Hello, hello. So today I am going to revisit the eight pen questions tag that Simona and Leanne set up last year. And so they are running it again for another year and they asked if anybody else wanted to jump on the train. So I decided to uh, revisit it. So I actually posted one last year with most of the details about how my fountain pen journey started and stuff like that. So I'll put that in the description in case you want more details or whatever, but I'm probably going to just go over that briefly and get into the other stuff. So the first question is, when and how did your fountain pen journey begin? So the reason I got into fountain pens was because of my artwork. So I was getting into urban sketching and uh, doing ink and wash a lot. So using sort of waterproof ink and then doing watercolor over it. So the first two fountain pens I bought were the Platinum Preppy and the Sailor Fude de Manon. So I saw a lot of urban sketches using fountain pens and their own ink. And I was a little hesitant to start using fountain pens because I kind of lumped them into the same area as uh, calligraphy pens. And as a left-hander, I found it really hard to use calligraphy pens. But I just saw all these urban sketches using it. And so I took the plunge and I really loved it. And I love the idea that you could put your own ink in here. So I actually use the Platinum Meteors instead of the Platinum Preppies now, just because I think they're cuter. So it's exactly the same. Um, let me take these off. So it's the exactly the same section here. So you can just switch and swap these, but I just like the aesthetic of this better. And I always keep this little meteor in my sketch kit and it's always filled with carbon black ink. I just use a cartridge because they're really affordable. I did actually buy the whole line of Aura and Klinger sketch inks and they're really good too, but I don't find myself drawing with them a lot. I, I tend to just like the black ink with the watercolor wash. So, um, so yeah, so here's some examples here. So I just use it for the black outlines here and then when it, it dries pretty fast actually and then I can just go over with watercolor and it won't smudge, it won't budge. It's really, really awesome. So I still use that pretty much every day and I just keep replacing those little cartridges when I need them but they last for a long time. Uh, and I tend to use the fine which is uh, a point three, I think. Uh, they all have a 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and either a 0.4 or 5, so extra fine, fine medium. And they're just super reliable. They don't dry out. The technology in these caps is just amazing. You can, you can see it on the preppy here. There's that little insert in there, and it's on a little spring, so it keeps the ink nice and wet for a long time. They were definitely the gateway drug into fountain pens, and so everything just kind of went from there. So the next question is, what was your ink in the beginning and what are your go-to inks now? So my inks in the beginning were these three diamine inks. So I got these off Amazon in a three pack. I think it was maybe around $12 or something. And this really introduced me to the world of color. And I loved all of these inks. I still use them today. I probably use the Earl Grey the most just because I love gray. I think they're a fantastic beginner ink for anyone starting out because they're really reliable. They're easy to use. They're nice and wet and perform pretty well. Uh, Rider's Blood is actually really, really wet. I probably wouldn't recommend that one as much, but these two really good. So these were my first inks. And this kind of segues into question three, which was how have your pen and ink taste changed. So this was kind of the color palette from last year. I talked a little bit more about it in my video from last year, but I still love all these inks and use them, but they're kind of a light palette. So my go-to inks today are probably a little more saturated, still the same sort of muddy swampy color palette. And I also fell in love with Birmingham Pen Company. So I have incorporated a lot of their inks and I love to make my own mixes and stuff. So that was really fun. I have a video about that. I'll put that in the description as well. Uh, just sort of making my own muddy mixes from their already muddy colors. <laughs> so that was really fun. So I enjoy doing that. So I'd probably say my favorite is still Robert Oster African Gold. I just think this is an amazing color. I never thought I would like sort of yellowy oranges, but I think it looks great on like every paper. It does look a little different. Sometimes it leans to the green a little bit more than others. Uh, I also have uh, Diamine Golden Brown in my SD, which is very, very similar. But yeah, I use both of these quite a lot. Uh, I love this Andorillium Top Moth Warm. This is a beautiful color. This is probably my ideal color. I love these sort of pink leaning browns and this is very readable. So I've been loving that. Um, these olivey greens, there's a bunch here. This Detox is really lovely. It has a bunch of shading in it. 
so yeah a bunch of different brands i'm not really a brand loyalist at all i kind of just go for the color and i feel like even within brands inks behave differently like you know for example this rider's blood is very different to the earl grey it's so much wetter it's just a different performer so i'm not sure if it's the dyes they use or whatever but i feel like even within a brand you can't rely on it performing exactly like another ink that you might love so i have a bunch of shimmer inks actually because i'm a ferris wheel press creative ambassador and they do release quite a lot of different shimmer inks so i've had a lot of fun with that uh, i had a favorite last year which is this glistening glass i still really love this i think it's just such a sophisticated color with that Payne's gray and the beautiful gold shimmer uh, i also have this um, pretty much perpetually inked up in my uh, twisby smoke rose gold so i just think it's the perfect ink for that pen and it's really really gorgeous and it pretty much always has shimmer in it so your text always has that beautiful sort of rose goldy shimmer uh, so yeah for the most part i am interested in all of these sort of swampy muddy colors but i also do love some really saturated ones and this one really surprised me i got this at the san francisco pen show last year and i am definitely not really a vibrant blue person but I put it in my Gold Coast Bennu and it is, I just, I keep inking it up with it because it's such a vibrant color and the, the shading on here is just bonkers. Um, I don't tend to see much of the sheen in the writing, but that's okay. I'm not a huge fan of sheen most of the time. I mean, I'm fascinated by it. I love it when I swatch it. I think it's really kind of amazing having all that color difference. But when I'm writing, I tend to gravitate more towards shading inks. So I've really been exploring those. This Birmingham Pen Company Pennsylvania Fieldstone is a fan favorite. I mean, it's just such an interesting ink. It really does behave differently on different papers and I feel like it changes even from day to day <laughs> like I'll look back at my journal entries and it feels like a different color it's very interesting and then this is kind of a new one that surprised me I don't tend to gravitate towards sort of these pink kind of colors but uh, I've been writing with this in my journal and like whole pages of text it's really easy to read and it's just so bright and I don't know I really like it so I've kind of been branching out probably more into these bolder colors. Yeah, that's kind of where I am in terms of colors. Okay, so the second half to that question is how have my pen tastes changed? Well, I would say when I first started out, my tastes were much more utilitarian. So I was gravitating towards uh, the cheaper end pens that would just serve a function for me to be able to use them for drawing. Now I think my appreciation has grown a lot more for the craftsmanship of fountain pens and the different brands and wanting to try different nibs and stuff. Uh, so I have kind of branched out into, you know, buying pens because I think they're super pretty or uh, they have an interesting nib on it. So for example, I probably never would have bought something like this just to have it in my collection. But I found myself, you know, getting Christmas money and birthday money and putting it towards funding these kinds of beautiful pens. So I, I get a lot more enjoyment out of just the aesthetic of it and the craftsmanship and the idea of just having these pens to look at. Uh, and also I have been part of the Atlas Stationers affiliate program and uh, you guys have been using my links, which is amazing. So I have been actually able to fund a couple of pens through that affiliate program. So um, for example, this Gold Coast Bennu, I'm surprised myself on so many levels with this pen. I just didn't think I was drawn to these kind of glitzy pens, but it's just, it's really, really lovely. And I think the craftsmanship is really interesting. The pen shape is really lovely. Uh, so just sort of looking at that aesthetic angle a little more has definitely changed the way that I think about fountain pen collecting instead of just using. Also, I never probably would have been able to afford this pen, which is an Estabrook SD with the journalist nib. It's quite a pricey pen. And thanks to you guys using my links uh, at Atlas, I was able to put some of that credit towards this. And so thank you so much, guys. <laughs> it's been really amazing to be able to afford this. And um, I absolutely love it. It's probably one of my favorite pens in my collection. Okay, so number four is what would you like to try in terms of pens and inks? Well, I guess I would like to try everything. <laughs> as silly as that sounds, but you know, because I've been collecting different pens, I'd love to try uh, maybe a Leonardo. I would love to try an Opus 88. As far as ink goes, uh, I would like to try every ink out there, I guess. <laughs> I am a total collector of color and uh, I just really love the whole swatching process. I like creating these little swatches. I like analyzing the ink and looking at their qualities. 
I like to create little videos uh, that sort of showcase what it looks like on different papers and also what the properties are like when if you were to use it as a watercolor so um, I have these like little swatches that have just like a little water droplet that I put water on first and then put the ink and see how it sort of bleeds so it's sort of a little bit like a chromatography uh, it's not using chromatography paper or anything but the water definitely pulls out the different colors in the ink and I just find it fascinating so I am happy to try every ink out there as far as buying bottles of ink I probably don't write enough to use a ton of bottles. I love getting bottles of ink if I'm going to swap samples with pen friends and such, uh, but I am perfectly happy just sort of getting a little taste of each ink and just so I can create a swatch from it and just see what the properties are like. I obviously have bought bottles of ink. I bought a bunch of Birmingham Penco bottles because you can't buy samples, but I've also swapped a lot with different pen friends. All right, so number five is what is your holy grail pen? Um, I don't really have one. Uh, I answered this question similarly last year. I would like to try a bunch of different pens, but I'm not really pining after any one pen in particular. I don't really have a holy grail pen. Um, number six, how many pens and inks do you own? Uh, I own a bunch of bottles of inks. A lot of them are the first wheel press because I'm part of their ambassador program. Um, I showed my other bottles uh, on my video last year if you want to look at those and I own a bunch of samples probably over 200 different samples of inks you can check out my fountain pen companion I'll put in a link in the in the description in case you want to swap inks or anything like that so as far as how many pens I have got I have a bunch of sort of preppies and meteors and sort of lower end pens that I use for art or just experimenting but these are my go-to pens I don't really have many other special pens apart from what's in here and I kind of like that so uh, let me get these out and I'll show you what they are so this first one is Nabila Voyage in Tromso and it has a rose gold nib which is really lovely and I actually bought some uh, additional nibs for this from the Nabila site you can just buy them I think they're about 15 bucks and uh, I had to get this in abroad because they were out of all the other nibs so I just ended up buying a fine and a medium and I have the medium in here right now uh, my next one is my Heinz Magic Mermaid and this has a colored nib as well so this is like a purple nib and I've had no issue with that I've heard some people have had issues with the color nibs I have no issues at all and this one is in a fine I have this little pen case inside my pen case, which has my Bennu Euphoria in Gold Coast. This is an Atlas Stationers exclusive. And I also have the Earl Grey Bennu Euphoria uh, from Goulet that is coming. So that will go in here with my other one. I'll probably take my SD out. Speaking of SDs, this is my Estabrook SD in Tortoise with a custom grind journalist nib. I also have a replacement nib for this that I bought on another site, which is a Estabrook Extra Fine Flex. So I have yet to try that out. I've been enamored by this journalist nib, so I haven't switched it out yet, but uh, I am excited to try that one out. Then I have a couple of Twisbees left in here. So I have the Twisby Eco in white. I have the Twisby Rose Gold Mini, which has a rose gold nib. I actually really like this one. It's little but it's I don't know it's really nice I, I've been using it a lot I have um Sherry Sonata in here from Ferris World Press and it's just a really great writer I think that one's in a fine and then I have the smoke rose gold Twisby here and this one's a medium I believe and it always pretty much has J Urban Shogun in here because I just think it's such a, a great mix and I just love using a black ink that has a little bit of specialness to it and then the last thing I have in here are a couple of Cavecos. So I had the Smooth Sage that I was pining for last year. I ended up being able to get that at a good price. So I grabbed that one. I have the uh, Mandarin. This is the Skyline Sport. And then I have this little guy, which is a super cheapy pen. I think this is about five bucks, but it's awesome. It's a little Moon Man. Um, it's a One Kai Mini. I had this One Kai Mini as well. Uh, but this one is just really pretty. It has like little sparkles in it. It's like a translucent sort of purple with sparkles. And I put Ferris Wheel Press uh, Aurorealis in it, which is a magnificent match. It's just beautiful. And this is an extra fine and it writes really nice and wet. It's still a really fine line, but the shimmer from this ink is just amazing. I, I did try that ink in my Caveco and it just, I don't know, it didn't really work so well. So I was trying to hunting around for another pen and 
I ended up getting this little guy and it is perfect. So I really, really love that ink and I really love that pen. So these are my main pens that I use the most often. I don't really reach for my other ones, so that's also why I'm kind of hesitant to buy any more pens, but I think uh, I can probably fit a couple more in my collection, but I may end up sort of selling some to get other ones depending on how my tastes change. Uh, but I'm really happy with this collection. I use them all, I love them all, so yeah, I think it's really great. Okay, so number seven is do you have a limit on the amount of pens or inks? And uh, not really, uh, definitely not in inks. I would collect inks until my house was full of ink, but <laughs> pen, pen wise, I guess I don't have a number or it's, I guess it's more of a feeling. So get birthday money or like affiliate credit or something like that. I um, get excited about getting another pen. So um, it's definitely one of my priorities in my expendable money account, but I am really happy where I am right now. I am going to the San Francisco Pen Show later this year, so I'm sort of saving up a little budget for that because I would love to get another hand turned pen or maybe a Franklin Kristoff. So uh, I'm kind of not buying too many pens right now because I kind of want to save up for that and just keep my budget in perspective. Um, but yeah, not really a limit on either of them, just sort of going with how I feel and, and being responsible with my expendable funds. And number eight is kind of paired with number seven, which is consequently, if another ink or pen came along, what would you do? And uh, as far as ink goes, I would try and get a sample of it. I would try and do a swap with somebody uh, to get a sample of it. I would buy a bottle if I really, really thought I would love it. Um, so inks, I kind of have a little bit more flexibility with. Pens, I really try and wait. I think I mentioned this in my last video. I have like several different carts, probably a cart for every fountain pen shop out there that I have pens in and I just like to look at them and that's kind of enough. <laughs> there have been like the Earl Grey tea pen that is coming. I resisted the first two rounds and getting that, the first two releases. And then I thought, you know what? I really love Earl Grey tea. I drink tea every single day. It sort of has a bit of a sentimental meaning to me. So uh, when the funds came around, I decided to go for it and get that one. I really try and purchase stuff purposely and make, uh, I, I try not to make rush decisions. I mean, this guy, he was $5 and that even took me a little bit of time to think about whether I really wanted it. So I think that's all the questions. Uh, I wanted to thank Simone and Leanne again for putting this tag out there. It's really fun. I've been really enjoying watching everybody else's videos. And speaking of other people that have also done this video, I'm going to put links to the person that came before me, who is Charmaine, and the person after me, which is going to be Monica, in the description below with links to their videos and also the whole eight pen questions tag. Yeah, and I hope you have fun watching them all. I hope this was informative or fun or something helpful <laughs> and uh yeah thanks guys thank you so much for joining me and i will see you in the next one bye